Hey, how's it going? John here with Marshall Motor Freight. And today I want to talk about knowing your numbers. So there's a lot of talk about <clears throat> how, how low the rates are and how, how hard it is to make money, how, how hard it is to make ends meet, how hard it is to keep your business running, basically how hard it is to run your truck because of the low rates and the high costs. <clears throat> now, there is some validity to that. You know, the rates are lower than they have been in the past few years, and costs are definitely up. But do you really need high rates to remain profitable? That's the question we're going to answer today. <clears throat> now, a lot of people talk about I need at least two dollars a mile, or some people say I don't pull enough unless it's three dollars a mile. But that might be what you want, but is that what you need? You know, a lot of people park their truck because the, the rates are so low, they, they claim they can't make the money they need to make. Um, <clears throat> or they don't even look at a load unless it's at least $2 a mile. But in reality, do you need $2 a mile to uh, maintain your cost of living or to maintain your quality of life or maintain your business in general. So, so up here we have numbers that are, <clears throat> they don't relate to me, they probably don't relate to you, but these are just some random numbers to go over, you know, what what numbers do we need to come to cost per day? So a lot of people talk about cost per mile and the X amount of dollars per mile to make good money, but what you really, really need to know is your cost per day. How much does, does it cost you per day to run your truck and pay for your bills. And this is your, on the business side <clears throat> and also on your household side. So we're gonna start with the household. Now I got rent at 1500. Now all of these numbers have to be adjusted for your circumstances because these numbers will be different from every, for, these numbers will be different for everybody. So there's no way I can tell you exactly the numbers you need to put together to make to come up with your cost per day. So all these numbers are general. Just know these numbers have nothing to do with me. You know, this these numbers, this rent cost has nothing to do with my actual rent cost. This truck payment cost has nothing to do with my truck payment cost because my rent is higher than that. And, my, and I don't even have a truck payment. I have zero truck payment. So household. So we got rent at 1500 utilities, which covers your electric, uh, your cable, if you have cable. Basically, your house, keep your lights on, your gas, got that at 300 a month, insurance at 125, your groceries at 600, dining, you know, you got to treat yourself, you're going out to eat, let's say $260 a month, <clears throat> your investments, whether or not you have them, you should, at $200 a month, whether that's crypto, stocks, bonds, gold, silver, gold, silver, not necessarily an investment, but gold, silver, or just uh, saving up money to for retirement or whatever. But we got it at 200 a month, cover payment 300 a month, you know, and then we got et cetera at 300 a month. And et cetera is just a number that, you know, makes these numbers more realistic, whether you, your costs are higher or lower. <clears throat> and of course, if your costs are lower than this, that's even better, right? But we got et cetera at 300 a month, that's a total of $3,585 per month for the household side. Now let's go to the business side. So business monthly, we got truck payment at two thousand. Your insurance, which includes your liability and also your cargo, at fifteen hundred. Your trailer payment at eight hundred and forty-five. Prepayments at twenty-six dollars a month. Your twenty-two ninety at forty-eight dollars a month. Now I know you don't pay that every month, but that's a yearly cost. But we average. It's something you have to pay, so you might as well average the cost out. How much it costs you per month. Your ELD at $100 a month. Your bookkeeping at $20 a month. Now, I know that's low, but I'm looking at the perspective of you keeping your books via software. Now, if you're paying someone to keep your books, of course, that number will be higher. Services, $150 a month. Now, services is will be your scales, uh, your random permits, and, you know, I don't know, you know, stuff like that. You got that $150 per month, and et cetera, at $300 a month. You know, costs that I didn't cover. And those are your fixed costs. And now we're going to talk about variable costs. Now, the tricky part about variable costs is that, is that that's hard to estimate. That's hard to calculate because 
it changes depending on the load you're running, depending on where you're running, depending on whether or not you're gonna run a tow road. So fuel, the best we can do with the fuel is know what we average per mile, power, per miles per gallon. So you need to be tracking your miles per gallon when you're getting fuel. And that's a whole separate video on how to do that if you don't know how to do that. But you should know what you're averaging miles per gallon because they will need that number to uh, put into our formula when we're calculating our cost per day or our cost per day when it comes to the loads we run. Because so we won't calculate fuel until we are booking the load or attempted to book a load because there's really no way to get the real number we need until we are looking at the load that we're going to run. Taxes, it's hard to estimate how much you should put aside for taxes other than a percentage because you're paying taxes after expenses. So you don't know what your taxes are because you until you spend the money. So whatever's left, you tax it. Uh, there's a range. Some people say hold back 25%. Some say 28%. Some say 30%. So we're just going to high end and say that you'll hold back 30% for taxes after expenses. Maintenance, now when it comes to maintenance, depending on the age of your truck, depending on your comfort level, level, depending on your resources, how much you put aside for maintenance depends, you know, that, dep that determines how much you put aside for maintenance. So what I, my rule of thumb is with a newer truck, 10 cents a mile is probably a good number. And that's maintenance for your oil changes, you know, your PMs, your oil changes. Your DOT inspections, your annual DOT inspections, tires, uh, you know, just your just overall maintenance and breakdowns. So 10 cents a mile if you have a newer truck. For the older truck, I think older as in more than 10 years old, I would say 15 cents a mile or more, you should put, uh, you should hold back or put to the side for maintenance. Because of course, with an older truck, there's a potential for more breakdowns. So it's a good idea to hold back more money. Um, and, you know, and, that, and that isn't so bad because if you have an older truck, chances are you're not making a truck payment. So you're holding back more for maintenance to offset the cost of breakdowns, even though you have a truck, even though you don't have a truck payment. Um, so so we got our total for our monthly household costs. We got a total for our monthly business costs. And now, like I said, all these numbers are hypothetical. You will have to sit down and write your, make your list. And I mean everything we spend for household. Even if you give your kids an allowance, that goes on your household costs. Even if you, uh, if you smoke, if you like to drink, if you like to take vacations, all anything you spend your money on or going to spend money on for your household, that goes in this column and you total that up. Multiply by total picture monthly cost for all that, multiply it by 12, get your yearly cost divided into 52 weeks, and then break it down to five days, six days, seven days, four days, depending on how you run. You know, if you're the kind of person that stays out, uh, you know, two, three, four, five weeks. You might want to divide that into six, seven days. I wouldn't say seven days because when you take time off, that cuts into that, uh, that average. Uh, with the business side, any business expenses you think you might have or do have, you list that, total it up, same thing, multiply that monthly cost by 12, divide into 52, divide into five days. But we'll go off a five day number for our estimate. And with these totals, you're probably thinking that's a big number. But really, the household cost per day is only $165.50. The grand total between the two is $85.74. And the cost per day between your business and household is only $395.72. Now, I'm pretty sure you're probably like, well, that doesn't seem as bad. Now, so like we said in the beginning, $2 a mile, $3 a mile might be what you want, but is that what you need? Because your cost per day between your household and business expenses is only 79 cents per mile. That's, 
That's all you need. Sure, we're not talking about fuel yet because, like I said, you don't know your fuel cost until you're looking at a load. But 79 cents a mile covers your monthly. So this would be 79 cents a mile after fuel and after maintenance. That's what you would need to average to cover all your household and business expenses. That's way, way lower than $2 a mile, ain't right? So like I said, we're going to uh, look at this scenario in real life and show you that you can be profitable if you know your cost per day because you know what to look for compared to if you're sitting and waiting to find that $2, $3, $4 mile load. You know, the thing about that, when you sit and wait because you need something that pays $2.50 or $3 a mile, you don't, you don't win doing that. You lose. Because if you wait a day because you're trying to get from, let's say, Chicago to Texas, but you're waiting for a load that pays $3 to get you there, once you sit a day, your cost per day goes up. That doubles. So now you don't you need more than $395.72. You know, let's brown that up. Let's say that's $400. Now you need $800 on the low end to, to meet that cost per day, and your cost per mile goes up. So you're waiting for that $3 mile load, and you've been waiting two days. You don't need two dollars now. Now you need four dollars a mile because you lost a day of running. And you, it's hard to make that up when you start sitting. So you know a lot of people say I don't run cheap freight, but nobody knows what really cheap freight is. It's just an arbitrary number they make up in their head. But when you sit and wait, you don't win, you lose. So and this is why a lot of people end up going out of business. A lot of drivers go out of business. Our own, own operators go out of business. It's, it's because they sit and wait, looking for that, waiting for that two fifty, three dollar a mile load. I'm not saying two fifty is hard to find, but if you're not getting what you, if you can't find what you're looking for, I'm not saying just take anything, but it's best to take something that's a, that gets you as close to that number you need as possible and get to a different area that can potentially get you the numbers you need. So like I said, we're gonna take this scenario and apply it to real life so I can show you that it's not hard to, to earn a profit even though the rates may be low. So let's jump over to the computer. Okay, so like we talked about uh, in the video, your cost per day is 395 dollars and 72 cents which comes out to about 79 cents per mile uh if you base that around on 2500 miles a week but that 395.72 is also if you're running or someone running five well in this scenario this imaginary person running five days a week so first load we're going to look at is this tql low out of louisville going to texas odessa texas it's 114 empty miles and 1,197 loaded miles. So the way you want to figure out whether or not this load is, pro is profitable, you know, they have a rate of $2,200 on it. So how you want to find out how you would do the math to see if this rate will work, I mean, if this load will work for you in this scenario is we have to add up the empty miles and the loaded miles. So pull out your handy dandy calculator. All right. So 114 empty miles plus 1,197 loaded miles. That comes out to $1,311. I mean, <laughs> 1,311 miles. All right. So the first thing you want to get is your is your fuel costs. So remember I said that you don't know your fuel costs until you have a load to book. That's why we don't put fuel into our cost per day ahead of time because we don't know how much the fuel is going to cost. Especially since the since you're you're running different miles every day, you're going different places every day, and the fuel cost changes every day. So it's hard to estimate what your fuel cost is going to be. All you can do is just get an average, but we're trying to see if this specific load will be profitable. All right, so we'll take, we'll divide 7.5 miles per gallon into 13.11, and 
and that's 174 gallons. Well, we'll just round it up to 175 gallons. All right, now that you got your, how much fuel you'll burn or need for this run, now you want to multiply that by cost of fuel. This could be the average cost of fuel. It can be fuel that you just got the day before. It could be fuel you're gonna get. However you wanna do it, you just, you just wanna get the cost of fuel for this run. I just got fuel this morning, so I'm basing on my fuel costs today, which was $3 a gallon. So that's $525 just spend on fuel. All right. So now you got your fuel costs. You're going to spend $525 on fuel on this load. This doesn't mean you'll put $525 in your tank. This just means out of the fuel you have or fuel you're going to get, $525 of that is going to be burnt on this load. All right. So now you go back to your total miles for this run, multiplied by your maintenance cost, which was 10 cents a mile. And that's $131. We'll just say $131. We ain't gonna even use the cents. <clears throat> you just add that to your fuel costs. 525 plus the 131 for your maintenance costs. That's 656 dollars in variable costs now, i'm not going to do tolls and all that stuff plus coming out of louisville going to texas a uh, that's a well i'm not 100 sure but if there's tolls along the way which i'm not 100 sure of you'll add that in but we're not going to worry about that um so you got your total total variable costs now you want to add in your cost per day now that you got your fuel and your, your variable costs now you add in your cost per day it's, it's a 1300 mile run so that's about two days, maybe two and a half days of running. You know, I, cause I'm not, I don't, I didn't call in the loads. So I don't know when it delivers, but so we'll just say two and a half days. You, you'll, you'll pick it up. Today's Tuesday. So you pick it up today, Tuesday, run it today, especially since it's the afternoon. So it probably delivers Thursday morning. So we'll say two and a half days of running. So we'll take our... So um, cost per day, $395.72, divide that in half, that's your half day, and then you add in your other two days. Then you add in your variable costs, $1645.30. And the load pay pays twenty two hundred. So obviously, this load will be profitable, and as you see, it only pays a dollar eighty four a mile. So, do you need two dollars a mile to keep yourself in business? Do you need me to answer that question? I'm not saying you should strive for two dollars, three dollars, four dollars a mile. I'm just saying, you know, you want to get as much money as you need, but do you need a minimum of $2 a mile, $3 a mile to keep your truck running, to keep the household costs, stuff taken care of? You know, let's even look at what is, what does that even come out to? So you take your um, what you're gonna make. That's a dollar twenty-five a mile. Is what you what you'd be averaging if if you were going for the sixteen forty-five. That's a dollar twenty-five a mile. And like I said, that includes your fuel, that includes your maintenance, and that includes two and a half days of running. So this load will be more than profitable and um, so th I'm basing this on someone running under their own authority because obviously I didn't do a like if you if you're splitting a percentage with the company you're running under or running with 
So let's look at this if you were getting a paid a percentage, you weren't getting 100% of the line haul. So if you, let's say you work with a company that, which gets into a lot of variables then too, because it depends on how the company pays. You know, maybe you don't pay cargo. Maybe you do pay cargo. Since I don't know those costs, I mean, that's something that when you make your list of business business expenses, you would list all the things you have to pay or not have you wouldn't list the things you don't have to pay and then you'll get your cost per day for your business side but we're going to base this on let's say you work for a company you're getting you get 80 percent. so what you would do is take that number once you get that total cost you know you need that 16 45 30 but this is going to be after your split so th so this means you have to figure out what do you need above that after your split to still get this minimum so you would divide that into if you're getting 80 percent you would divide that into 80 you would need 2056 instead of that 1600 on the minimum so so you still even if you book this load <clears throat> and you kept 80 percent and the company got the rest you are still be in profit and that's how you will figure out if you're you know if you run under someone else's authority if you, this load is to be profitable If you were running for 75%, you would need 2193 to still be profitable in this scenario. Of course, you're, what the company pays that you're running under and what you pay probably would change as your percentage goes down. Like they might cover more stuff, but let's say you're getting 90%. Because I know some of, those out, some of those out there. You would just need 1828. So that's how you figure out how much above beyond you need if you're getting paid a percentage of the line haul. So like I said, like the point I'm trying to make in the video isn't you should take cheap loads. My point is that you can still find profitable loads regardless of market conditions when you know your numbers when you go off of cost per day when you're chasing models when you're chasing the mileage rate that will set you up for failure because you don't know how much you need from a mileage standpoint until you're running the load you know a load if a load was going 500 miles would two dollars a mile about would two dollars a mile be enough if a load was going a thousand miles, would two dollars a mile be enough? Well, you don't know that. You just base it off of I need two dollars a mile. But when you know your numbers and break it down like this, you know that you're going to be in profit. I mean, I mean uh, that's along with that's that's as long as something catastrophic doesn't happen along the way, but. So that's one way to do it. I also want to show you how to do it using uh, 123 Load Board has a app. It's kind of like a shortcut. Instead of you having to do all the math, I want to bring it up for you. All right, so you open up the app and you go to Profit Calculator. And then you just input what you need. So it says miles, we'll put in that 1311 and it was the lowest paying 2200 uh, miles per gallon is 7.5 all right and then you'll put in your three dollars a gallon uh, zero tolls got the dispatch fee at 20 percent yeah, 20%. If you keep your 80%, you put 20%. Whatever your split is, if you if you're getting dispatched, I mean if you're getting if you're working under somebody else's running under somebody else's authority, you put in there what the split is. If, if the company keeps 20%, you put that in there. If the company keeps 30%, you put it in there. If they keep 10%, you put that number in dispatch fee to keep the numbers accurate. And other fees, you just put in 
your cost per day, your total cost per day for the run, whether it's a one day run, two day run, three day one run, weekly run, whether you're getting paid extra for stops, you know, you put all that in other fees. But you don't put your fuel costs in the other fees because your fuel cost was already calculated up here when you did estimated fuel costs. So you don't add that in here. So your so that number will be eleven twenty thirty. Because that's without the fuel costs instead of that sixteen. So as you see, $115.30 will be your profit. And that's profit above and beyond your business expenses and your household expenses. This is $115 that you can, this is extra money you can put back, put into your business or save or put back or put into a savings or retirement account or, or, or put into savings for a vacation, you know, have whatever you want to do with it. So anytime that green, that number's green and it's profit, because you already have all your costs in this number. So I want, I want you to just grasp how powerful it is to know your numbers. This is $115 profit. Now I got to pay my household bills. This is $150 profit and everything's already paid for. All right. That's why it's important. You know your cost per day. You know your numbers. If that number was red, that would mean, you know, let's say it was a negative $115. Then it would be red. But that's not necessarily bad. That $115 just means some of your costs weren't covered but you still are in profit now if this like a big number then obviously yeah you don't want to do that uh do you want this number green every time yeah but there will be times where you just can't find a load that gets you in the green but if you keep moving and you take the most profitable load you can find, it all works out, you know, it all works out in the end. It all works out at the end of the week. It all works out at the end of the month. But if you sit and wait, like I said, if you sit and wait, unless you unless you book the load already for the next day that compensates for you sitting a day, then you might be okay. But if you're sitting and waiting and hoping tomorrow you'll find that $3 a mile load, if you're sitting waiting and hoping tomorrow you find that 250 a mile load, that four dollar mile load, because you're trying to get to a certain place for for a certain number, then you're gonna always be behind, and it's only a matter of time before you you just can't make it work, and you you'll be out of business. Uh, one thing I want to do is if you take out the dispatch fee, that increases like like if you're running under your own authority. That's $555 profit. So, so yeah, there's a cool little handy dandy tool that 123 Load Board provides. And I could go through a bunch of loads, but you get the idea of how this works. So, if you got some value out of this video, I hope you like, share, and subscribe. As you see, I'm not a I don't, I'm not currently using 123 Load Board. Like, I'm not currently a paid member, but if you get some value out of this video, like, share, subscribe. I'll put some resources below this video. And if you have some comments, leave them below. And I'll talk to you again soon.